folks. Hey, Brad Miller with you today, flybass.com. And um, I, I thought I'd impart a little bit of wisdom that I, I picked up over the years as far as uh, what to bring with you on a fishing trip, particularly if it's going to be like a guided fishing trip. You're going to be in a boat. Um, I just got back from a trip down in uh, down to Yucatan for baby tarpon, and I've done it several times. And, um, whether you're going freshwater fishing or you're, you're going in a, a guided uh, float trip boat or anything, um, even um, freshwater or saltwater, it's good to have a boat bag along with some items in there that you may need. Now, today's uh, topic is going to be largely geared towards uh, salt water, but I think it uh, can apply to just about anything. So let's get started. Let's jump right in and get started. I'm going I'm to try to move fairly fast here because I got quite a few things to, to cover. The first thing is, is what kind of a boat bag do you want to have? Um, I like this relatively small one from, from Plano. Obviously, it should be waterproof, okay? That's, that's number one. This one ha happens to have a kind of a hard bottom on it, which is really handy. And it's even got a little area in here I can a little pocket I can zip some stuff in there excuse me where I put my any kind of medications or anything like that that I'm bringing along I want to protect a little bit but these bags are nice I actually hang a uh, little hook sharpener off of here too very important item to have make sure you have a hook sharpener with you um, next thing uh, that I'm going to talk about is if you get yourself a lightweight uh, rain jacket um, obviously you're going to bring that along but don't bring a heavy one, uh, especially if you're going to be fishing in warm water, okay? Um, if you're going to be fishing down in the tropics or something like that. And this actually, this one here is actually a little heavier than what I typically use. Uh, just a real nice thin one because what happens is um, you take off in the morning and, and it could be in the high 60s, low 70s in the tropics. Um, and that's enough where if you don't have a little extra protection, um, you know, you get a little uncomfortable. Or if it rains, obviously, that can also always happen as well. Um, what are we going to bring as far as some other types of clothing items and, and important items? And I've kind of got items that are pretty much imperative that you should have, you have to have with you. And I've got some other items that are sort of optional. So I will hit the, we'll hit the important ones first. Uh, obviously sunscreen. Don't forget your sunscreen. Bring that along. My dermatologist says every two hours we apply it. Uh, a buff. Um, is, these things are great. Um, you see them all over now. Um, and um, uh, just you can cover up your the front of your face and you can pull it up over your hat and uh, they're just great to have so have a buff along um, also you know I did just mention a hat I'll just this is something here that's not a bad idea to have an extra hat now you can take a uh, one of these hats and, and just to fold them into themselves they don't take up a lot of room and throw them in your bag because if you lose your hat you're going to be kind of screwed. Um, an, an old trick Lefty Cray, uh, I read somewhere from Lefty, he always liked to have a dark bottom on the bottom of his his visor, okay? And uh, it just helped reduce any kind of glare. And that's really important. Uh, so think about that when, with the kind of hats you're bringing along. Um, try to make sure that you have a kind of a dark visor on the underside, okay? Doesn't matter on top, of course, but the underside. But not a bad idea sometimes to have an extra hat with you, okay? Don't forget a hat. Um, now, here's something else that I like, okay? This is called a, these are called a strip ease, okay? And um, you take them and you put them on like that, okay? These are, these are your, your rod, what I call your rod hand. Um, your stripping uh, hand, you're going to be running the line through there if you're fly fishing. Um, and if you're fly fishing, uh, it's a potential you can get a line cut, especially in the crease areas of your fingers here or here. And um, once you get a line cut, um, it's going to be very sensitive. It's going to hurt. So um, either put the put the protection on after you get a line cut, or put them on before you get a line cut, and you'll be happy that you did. But yeah, these these strippies are just great. They're leather. They're really tough, and they work very well. So I bring along the strippies. Um, how about tools, okay? My number one tool, and if you've followed me at all, you know that I'm a big proponent of uh, mitten scissor clamp. And the mitten scissor clamp is several tools in one, okay? You can bring a line cutter, you can bring a pliers, 
um, you can bring several different tools to do what this thing will do in one tool. For example, I've got, I also bring along this guy here, just in case I need a little bit heavier duty pliers. I don't use this hardly ever, but um, I've got it in the bag. Um, and it's got, a, it's got a cutter on it, a crimper, and it's basically a, a fishing plier, okay? Handy to have, you can strap it on and so on and so forth. Um, I don't use this, but I have it available just in case. Um, another, but again, if I've got a, uh, if I've got this, um, and I want to cut line, I want to crimp line, um, I want to, let's say I want to really, I want to hold on to something. Um, the mitten scissor clamp does, this mitten scissor clamp, by the way, as you can see, has a spike in it there, and that goes right into that little hole, so if you've got glue in the eye of a fly, or if you've got a paint in a jig or something like that, you can pop it right out of there real quick and, real quick and easy. Uh, this happens to be a 7-inch mitten scissor clamp, and that's the handiest all around size. They also come in five and a half inch and I have a few eight inch but they're hard to, getting harder and harder to find. So a mitten scissor clamp, great great thing to have. I also carry a small wire cutters. Okay? Why wire cutters? <clears throat> First of all, I'm not going to use my, my mitten scissor clamp to cut wire. I'm just not. I'll wreck it. This is a surgical tool and um, you have to be careful. The scissors are razor sharp on this. They're great for cutting monofilament line and Dacron but don't cut wire with it. Uh, Cutting, if you do um, have need for wire, let's say you're in you're uh, in the Caribbean, you're going after sharks or barracuda or something like that, toothy critters, uh, northern pike, musky, stuff like that, um, you might use a wire leader. So you can use this to cut um, some wire. But most important reason to have a wire cutter is if you get a hook um, buried into you somewhere and you can't back it out of there, okay, and it's stuck in there, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll push it through so that the end of the hook with the barb, we can, we can, we can take the uh, wire cutter and just cut the hook off, okay? And then we can back it out once we got the barb off. Or just, pin, you know, you can also pinch the barb and try it that way. But sometimes you just need to cut some wire. Wire cutter is a good thing to have. I also carry a Swiss Army knife in here multi-tools um, you have to do some surgical repair of your your reel or rod or something like that in the boat you know um, screwdrivers scissors all kinds of different great things on these swiss army knives so i've got that available and it's a good thing to have along um, just in case i don't use it very often but if i need it i've got it okay um all right now obviously um, sunglasses you know Get yourself some good, high-quality sunglasses. This is probably the other item that I would suggest maybe having a duplicate of in the boat, in your bag. Um, and maybe the duplicate pair is a less expensive pair of polarized that you got laying around. Um, you know, put them in a Ziploc or something and throw them in the bag. Because if you lose or you break your, your sunglasses, um, it's really going to be tough. Because a lot of fishing is sight fishing, especially in salt water, bonefish, tarp, and stuff like that. You've got to be able to see those fish to be able to put the fly where it needs to be, or the lure. Um, and whether it's freshwater or not, um, it's just good to have eye protection. If people are throwing flies around and jigs and whatever else, it's just great to protect your eyes, period. So um, not a bad idea to have an extra set of sunglasses. Extra set of sunglasses, extra set of hats are probably the two main things I'd double up on if I had to. Okay, um, now here are some other items. Um, obviously, uh, you're going to bring a phone. Um, you're going to bring um, a camera. I, I like to bring my little waterproof camera for taking videos mainly um, because it's got a really good microphone on it. So, and, and if I drop it in the water, whatever, it's good to 30 feet. So that, that helps too. If I am, um, if it's raining out, I don't get, get my phone wet, I can use this puppy. So it's nice sometimes to have a little extra camera with it, provided they're waterproof, okay? Uh, I never go anywhere typically without <clears throat> uh, WD-40, okay? I've got this in my bag and, and um, I, I don't use it that much, but I use it quite a bit and I think we all know how fantastic WD-40 is. So I carry, you know, you don't have to carry a can this big. By the way, also put this stuff in a plastic bag. Um, just because, obviously, you know what can happen if they open up. Same thing with this stuff. I've got a little bag here and I've got some line coating for fly fishing. 
I've got some line coating for the fly line. Um, if it gets, you know, if you're having problems shooting that line out or the line doesn't seem to be doing what you want, uh, you can coat the line out there and um, take care of it that way. And I never go anywhere without super glue. All right. And there are so many uses for super glue. I'm not going to get into it. But I will show you this. I've got a got a little scar there just above my eye, and I, I cut myself a while back. And um, we didn't have butterfly bandages, but we had super glue. So we just sort of pinched it together, put some super glue on there, kept it closed for about 5-10 seconds. And uh, super glue is used all the time if there's cuts, that kind of stuff. So great thing to have along. You break something, um, uh, just bring it. Bring some super glue along. Okay, but put, them, put that stuff in a plastic bag just in case they open up on you. Um, it wouldn't do your bag and its components any good to have that okay um oh yeah obviously pride goes without saying bring some toilet paper along and some tissues maybe okay uh, for obvious reasons um and um just just bring them along and the other thing on that note it's really good to have is a small towel okay now when you stay at a hotel um, wherever you're going, you can maybe rifle one of these out of the room or borrow it for a couple of three days and have it. But a nice clean towel for cleaning off your sunglasses and anything you might want to need to dry off, but especially your sunglasses. Um, either bring one along with you or borrow one from the hotel for a few days when you're fishing. Um, and it's, it's a really good, really good idea to have that along as well. And the last piece of kind of cleaning equipment um, I got this uh, from United uh, Airlines here, and it's just 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol, you know, for, for wiping and sanitizing. But what I use it for is cleaning off my sunglasses, because you're going to be cruising along, you're going to get salt water on spray on your sunglasses or any kind of water spray. Um, you just got done uh, putting on some lotion and you got it on your sunglasses and all of a sudden you got smears and everything on your sunglasses and nothing takes all that stuff off there better than uh, than this kind of thing you can also go to the uh, drugstore and buy these little boxes of these glass cleaner which are the same thing as this it's 70 percent isopropyl alcohol it'll take uh, off any kind of grease that you have on your sunglasses very important to have because there's nothing like having nice clean clear sunglasses because um, you got to be able to see what's going on out there especially um, okay uh, we talked about um, just a little bit about medication obviously bring along any type of prescription medication that you might might need or want to use out there if you got a problem but I just take one of these canisters that I had laying around and I filled it full of a bunch of different things that I I thought I might need um, Tums, um, I've got some anti-inflammatory, uh, Aleve, Advil kind of stuff in there. Um, and I've even got a, uh, I've even got a small little tab of, uh, Imodium here. Kind of hard to see, but Imodium, you know, for those of you that don't know, Imodium is made for, is an anti-diarrhea, uh, situation. Now, I just got back from Mexico and, you know, we didn't have any problems. But um, those problems can arise. And if you're out in the boat and you don't want to totally ruin your whole day, it's a good idea to have some Imodium with you to kind of settle things down a little bit. Um, and then a couple other things, too, that are not necessarily imperative to have. Uh, but I bring them on because they don't take up too much room. It's kind of like what if kind of stuff. Um, I carry just a little flashlight thing that goes on my the lid of my hat, okay? And check this stuff out before your trip too. Make sure they work. Oh, that's helpful. Um, but you're going to be out fishing during the day, many and many times. But sometimes you're going to be coming in late, and you might need some light, or you know you have a problem with the boat, and you wind up on a deserted, uh, mangrove-infested uh, island um, somewhere in the Caribbean. Um, might not be a bad idea to have some some light. And I always carry a lighter with me too. Um, I don't smoke, but um, I always carry a lighter just in case I need to make a fire or I need to heat something up like um, this this glue that I have for replacing I bring along some extra tip tops for my rod 
the rods I, I build rods so you know if, if you have a problem and if you were to break the tip just the very tip section the tip top broke you could put on a new tip top and again this is real optional um, because in most cases when you're when you're fishing um, especially fly fishing um, you're you're going to um, break the rod somewhere else <laughs> believe me um, it happens on a, just about every trip I go to uh, in, in a, for tarpon or especially well especially tarpon and um, yeah it's it's not unusual to break a rod so um, you know always uh, bring a bring as many rods as you need but um, uh, it's it's I just bring along this extra stuff um, just because I can I got room for it I can do it I also bring along some earplugs um, if if uh, the boat noise is starting to get to me or whatever, my hearing's not that great anymore anyway. But um, uh, I should probably use these more than I do. But uh, just to protect your ears a little bit. And I think that pretty much that pretty much wraps it up. With the exception of this is leader material. Okay, the leader material for um, uh, saltwater fishing, for example. Uh, or even freshwater fishing, um, you don't necessarily need these spools for freshwater because you can have, you're going to have some smaller spools of tippet material and probably have a few extra tapered leaders with you depending on what you're going after. But in saltwater, in this particular case referring to um, baby tarpon, <clears throat> we run a, uh, about a six foot section of 40 pound test and we marry that to either a 20 or a 30 pound section of um, the intermediate part of the leader and then the shock tip it is which is the very last part of the leader in saltwater fishing uh, the shock tippet is also 40 for for baby tarpon for um, giant tarpon would be 50 60 pound test sometimes 80 um, so that pretty much covers the whole thing i hope you guys um, have an opportunity to um, uh, get down get down to the tropics and do some fishing um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this and put some of it to use. And if you need any more information, uh, you can go to my website, flybass.com, and um, uh, send me an email from there, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So, hey, Brad Miller signing off, flybass.com. Uh, be safe, take care, and have fun. See you later.